Jeremy Dossa Herna Don Nifa Corfoin, and Shinna Stura in a Genifra, because not the grass to a Brona or even Cunida work from Crea. On the Scorutsa to Sofer on Ella Breer, August on the Genifasta, on the Scorutsa to Crete, no free, three please to our dear life. Direct we beseech to your Lord our actions by thy holy inspirations, carry them on by thy grace assistance, the early word and work of ours may always begin from thee and by thee be happily ended through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Need us questions? Well, I'm Deputy Michal Martin. Thank you, John Corla. Um, Taoiseach, a medical breakthrough that can double life expectancy uh, is something that we should embrace and not shy away from. Now, in the area of cystic fibrosis, uh, it is regarded that the uh, discovery and the emergence of the drug, uh, Calideco, represents such a breakthrough and is the biggest single breakthrough in relation to the CF condition since the discovery of the gene mutation um, involved back in 1989. Uh, Forbes has described this drug as the most important drug of 2012. And for all those involved in the treatment of cystic fibrosis, it is genuinely seen as truly a game changer in terms of the quality of life of people with cystic fibrosis and in terms of life expectancy um, itself. The drug received FDA approval last July. It is now available in the United Kingdom, in Germany, and in Canada. And it is the first drug uh, to treat the underlying cause uh, of uh, CF with people of the condition, and particularly people with the uh, G55ID uh, mutation. 11% of Ireland's CF population have that uh, particular gene. We have the highest occurrence of cystic fibrosis in the world in this country. And it strikes me as, to say the least, very disappointing indeed uh, that we are so late to the game in terms of having this drug available for uh, the patients concerned and for the people concerned, given its impact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are very convincing arguments, Taoiseach, for this life-changing drug. It is still not cleared for use in Ireland. Uh, and you know, just in the clinical trials alone, Thank you. when it was going through, it decreased relapses by 55% in patients on uh, clinical trials. Now, we've known about this drug for quite some time, uh, well over uh, the last number of years. It's been going through the various regulatory uh, systems and clinical trials. It could have a huge impact in terms of inpatient attendances and so forth. Can I ask you, Tisha, uh, has the Minister um, for Health or has anyone in the government met with the drug company Vertex? Or has there been any proactive engagement with a view to ensuring the availability of this drug um, on the marketplace? And can you outline to the House the, se the steps that have been taken by the government to ensure the availability of this drug uh, to the people with this condition? Thank you. Tisha. Well, first of all, let me say that the, the Minister for Health announced on the 15th of October last year um, that intensive negotiations involving uh, the IFA, the IPHA and the HSE and the Department of Health had reached a successful conclusion on a range of, um, uh, on, a, on a major deal on the cost of drugs in the state, and that the, the deal obviously is an important step in reducing the cost base of the health system here. Uh, that deal, which was concluded then, uh, with a value in excess of 400 million over the next three years, clearly means reductions in the cost of drugs for patients, a lowering of the, the drugs bill to the state, but timely access for, for patients for new cutting-edge drugs for certain conditions, the cost attached to that of 70 million annually, and therefore reducing the cost base of the health system into the future. Um, for Deputy Martin's information, the HSE received an application for the inclusion of Calideco with the generic name of uh, uh, Iva Kafter in the GMS and community drug schemes. That application is being considered in line with the procedures which have been agreed with the Irish Pharmaceutical Healthcare Association in recent drugs agreements such as the one I've mentioned. And these procedures uh, include um, clearly documented processes and timelines for the assessment of new medicines in as timely a fashion as, uh, as possible. And in accordance, therefore, with those procedures, the National Centre for um, uh, Pharmacoeconomics, the NCPE, conducted a, a health technology assessment, 
which provides detailed information on the potential budget impact of the medicine involved. And it also assesses whether the medicine involved is cost effective at the price quoted by the company in question, which is at 234,000 is, is, um, is uh, absolutely very costly. Now the NCP published its report on the 21st of January. That report concluded, and I quote, in view of the very high drug acquisition cost, the significant budget impact, the absence of long-term clinical data, and the fact that the company has failed to demonstrate the cost effectiveness of EVA CAFTR, we cannot recommend reimbursement of EVA CAFTR at the submitted price of €234,804 per patient per annum. A mechanism such as a performance-based risk-sharing scheme and or a significant reduction in price could facilitate access to EVA CAFTR treatment for cystic fibrosis patients with the G551D uh, CFTR mutation. Uh, that's what they uh, uh, concluded in their findings. Now that report is an important input, Deputy Martin, to assist decision making and it will help to inform the next stage of the process which involves further discussions between the HSE and the manufacturer of the drug. I understand yesterday that the Cystic Fibrosis Association of Ireland said that where they support the need for the HSE and the drugs company to get as good a deal as possible. Um, I also recognise the concerns clearly of cystic fibrosis patients, a number of whom have contacted me, that a decision would, would be made as soon as possible. I listened to Mr Barry speaking about this on the, uh, on the, um, on the news the other day, and he did say that we are to, uh, we are to proceed ahead of providing this particular treatment at this level of cost, that it would take 40% of the entire um, budget for drugs, which is obviously an issue that, uh, that, the, uh, that they took into account in their, in their conclusion of their, uh, of their analysis. Uh, again, I repeat this, it's projected to double life expectancy. This is not any ordinary uh, drug coming on the market in terms of just advancing incrementally treatments or, or, or interventions and treatments of particular conditions. This is truly a very significant game changer in a condition which has not witnessed such breakthroughs um, over a long period um, of time. And we know that in the United Kingdom, for example, the regime there in terms of licensing new drugs has been far stricter, with an even stronger reg regulatory impact than here over the years. Yet it is available in the United Kingdom. And Nice and Nice, or whichever way you want to call it, that, that's the authority in the UK which is responsible for the licensing of drugs, um, have approved this. And in the language coming from the Na National Centre, uh, it is without question, overwhelmingly on the budget side and on the cost side, Thank you. that this Question, drug has please. been uh, rejected and not put forward, not on the clinical trial side or not on in terms of the health outcomes uh, and the health impact of this particular drug. And all of these situations require a balance. Now, I asked you at the outset, had the minister met with the company? And it seems to me, Taoiseach, that last year, and I know from talking Thank in you. relation to quite a number of um, new uh, technologies and new drugs that came on, there was a complete uh, delay in terms of engagement in a, in, into IPI drug and a range of other drugs uh, last year. And what I get from your reply, unfortunately, is a disappointing sense that delay is going to be the order of the day here. Uh, and I think in the interests of the patients and the people with the particular condition, I would say to you that here is a case that does uh, justify the intervention of the minister and the government Thank you. with the company and all concerned. Uh, to sort of knuckle down and sort out a situation where this drug can be made available. It happened last year in relation to IPI and others when it, when, when it was raised. And I think it's important uh, that people don't play uh, a standoff uh, scenario or Thank engage you, in a standoff scenario, scenario on this particular uh, issue because the quality of life issues and the life expectant expectancy issues are so profound Thank that you. it demands a very uh, proactive response from the government one I would suggest we haven't seen on this particular drug to date. Uh, it's not a case of, uh, of uh, delays the order of the day here. <clears throat> Let me repeat again for you what the, um, what the, um, the National Centre for uh, Pharmacoeconomics, the NCPE, when they conducted their health technology assessment, what they said was, in view of the very high drug acquisition cost, the significant budget impact, the absence of long-term clinical data, and the fact that the company has failed to demonstrate the cost effectiveness of Evo CAFTR, they were not willing to, uh, to, uh, to assess it. Now, uh, you, might, you, might, you might as well know, Deputy, that the, there was a very rapid review submission on the drug 
submitted on the 13th of August last year. That rapid review was completed on the 22nd of August last year, uh, no delay there, and a full pharmacoeconomic assessment was advised. Following submission of that dossier, the NCP group met with the manufacturer on the 28th of November last year to discuss the submission, to request additional information. That was received on the 11th of December. I've given you the result of, of their assessment. They do say that the, uh, the evaluation of the economic dossier submitted by the company and the estimate of the annual cost at, at 234,804 per patient. They also estimate that approximately between 113 and 120 patients could benefit from the drug. So based on those figures, the annual budget impact would range between 26.532 million to 28.176 million. Now, no more than anybody in here, it, you can't put a price on, uh, on a life, and obviously it's an effective drug. But there's an issue here that needs to be followed through. The next step, Deputy Martin, uh, in, in this process is for the HSE to meet the manufacturer of the drug in accordance with the procedures that have been set out by IFA. When the Minister for Health met with them last year, he spoke about the and concluded a deal for 400 million over three years. This is a new, this is a new very expensive drug Thank you. with an impact for an estimated 113, 120 patients. I don't deny anybody the right uh, to have the best quality of life that we can give them. It is a 20, 26 to 28 million, 26 to 28 million uh, impact on the cost. Uh, and obviously ceilings have been set for the budget for this year. So the HSE will now meet with the company uh, and see can, can some deal be worked out here. I, do, I don't want to preempt what the, what the, what the uh, conclusion of that might be. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mary Jo McDonald. Thank you. Taoiseach, on Sunday last you took to the airwaves to threaten public sector workers with pay cuts. And last week, at the outset of Croke Park II negotiations, the government warned of compulsory redundancies within the public sector. Can I say to you, Taoiseach, that this is not the way to negotiate in good faith? The case for public sector reform is unanswerable and accepted by those in the public and civil service. And equally, the case for tackling, at long last, the very high, the very excessive pay of a tiny, tiny minority at the top and their excessive pensions is now unanswerable. Ministers, special advisers, senior civil servants all need to have their pay cut. And today, again, to add insult to injury, we see reports of former Tishi, former ministers, many of whom presided over the economic collapse in this state on lavish pensions. And the protection afforded to this class of person contrasts very starkly with Minister James Riley's plan to slash the pay and conditions of graduate nurses and midwives. You are attempting these graduates to accept yellow pack jobs and greatly reduced pay rates within the health service. So what happened to equal pay for equal work? The minister has indicated that he intends to extend this yellow pack strategy scheme to other workers in the health service. So Taoiseach, public sector reform will not be achieved by driving down wages for those at the bottom. So I want to ask you now, in the course of the negotiation for Croke Park Nua, will you defend pay equity? Will you defend equal pay for work of equal value? And will you finally deal with the issue, the glaring issue, of the tiny minority within the public and civil service who are overpaid and overpensioned. Thank you, Deputy. I reject your charge of threatening public service workers. You've set out a very clear position here of mandating the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform and his officials to negotiate with the unions in respect of uh, savings that need to be made in the public sector amounting to one billion extra cumulative between here and 2015. Those discussions are underway. I've made it perfectly clear, as is normal practice, that we would much prefer to have this by consent and by agreement. And I commend all of those who have, um, who have changed uh, structures within the public uh, sector and the public service in delivering frontline services um, with reduced numbers um, in, in changed environments. But I've also made the point, uh, Deputy, which you're well aware of, uh, that government 
reserve the right to legislate uh, for the savings that are to be acquired if they cannot be reached by consent and by agreement. Our preference is that they would be agreed uh, and reached by consent and by agreement. And I'm glad to say that the negotiations, while they're obviously challenging and in a challenging environment, are making good headway. I reject your charge of, um, of doing down the opportunity for graduate nurses from trained in this country to work in this country, in hospitals in this country. Um, and the two-year contract offered outside the framework agreement of ceilings for employment is an opportunity for Irish, Irish men and women as trained nurses to work in Irish hospitals uh, at a salary of between 22 and 25,000, which is equivalent to what uh, young accountants or, uh, or teachers would, would get, uh, to acquire experience and opportunities to build on their, uh, on their training in Irish hospitals and um, not to have the prospect of going abroad. I would have thought that somebody like you would welcome the fact that a thousand extra jobs are being made available for Irish nurses in Irish hospitals. But then I also understand that your own leader went abroad to uh, have treatment uh, under a health system uh, in, a, in, in the United States. He's entitled to do that. But as I understand, you're all on the industrial wage. Uh, these things are you know, difficult to, uh, to uh, understand fully. So um, for your running down of the quality of graduate nurses in Ireland, um, I, say, I, I, I say to you, Deputy MacDonald, that's not the way, that is not the way, that is not the way to look at the training of young Irish men and women who complete their graduate, their graduate classes to be nurses and that you, and that you say to them, you shouldn't take up these jobs in Irish hospitals. They are outside the employment framework. There are a thousand jobs there and I do hope that many of those young trained nurses who have worked abroad and from the three years graduate classes involved will take up the opportunity to have experience and competence acquired in Irish hospitals. After all, they are the best trained nurses in the world and we'd like to see them work in our own hospitals here in their own country. Thank you, Deputy MacDonald. Well, Taoiseach, you're no doubt right to say that they are the best trained nurses uh, and midwives uh, in the world. All the more reason to ensure that they, we have them within our, our system. Sinn Féin met with representatives uh, of the nurses. Uh, and in case you don't know, Taoiseach, and in case your colleagues in government don't know, uh, they are very, very angry with this scheme. They don't see it as some golden opportunity for them to contribute to the health service. They see it as a very cheap tactic to run down their terms and conditions and to run down the profession to which they are committed. They were, they were particularly outraged at the weekend when the Minister for Health suggested that if they weren't happy with the scheme, that they should emigrate or perhaps get a job in a fast food restaurant. So perhaps those are the kinds of choices that you and your government envisage for young, highly qualified mm -hmm. people. The position of equal pay for work of equal value is fundamental in any profession or job Thank and you. must be defended. You're clearly not minded to defend it. I hope that those within the Labour Party might take a different position. You very studiously avoided the core question that I put to you, which was around the issue of high pay. So you can slash the terms and conditions of a graduate nurse, but you'll protect your own back, Taoiseach, and your own excessive salary. Thank you, Deputy. You say you're prepared to legislate for pay cuts for low paid public sector workers, but you refuse consistently to legislate on the issue of runaway pensions. These gilt edged pensions of former Tishi and ministers, some uh, your own uh, former colleagues. So, why that contradiction? Surely, if you're to be fair, there has to be fair play all around, and by any standard, young nurses and midwives Thank and you. indeed the health service are getting a very raw deal from you. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, well, the point here, Deputy MacDonald, is that what's, what's involved in the health sector is to change the structures and the way that the health service is actually delivered. What the government have set out 
uh, for, the, for the end of term of this administration's life is that we have a situation where you have frontline services operating far more effectively, where you have a system of money following the patient where they can get their treatment based on their medical needs as distinct from their money, and, and that you introduce universal health insurance for everybody and not to have a situation like obtained in this country for years. Now, you want to perpetuate a system where you have agency nurses, premium payments and overtime, whereas what we want to do here is to change that structure because agency nurses can be working one day in, in ICU units and the next day in respiratory area and the next day in the general wards. There isn't any, there isn't any, uh, there isn't any, uh, any system that's operating in the way that it should. And those savings, Deputy MacDonald, will go directly to pay graduate nurses who can gain experience based on their training and provide a first-class service for patients. And what you are saying effectively here, and I regret that those in this situation should be saying that these jobs are not suitable for young nurses. There are a thousand jobs here in Irish hospitals for those graduate nurses, and I hope that they take up the applications. It's always a case, Deputy MacDonald, that the people inside the system who are being paid to deliver the quality service oftentimes complain about it but it's not delivering in the way that we want unless the structures change and what government are doing here is outside the framework for employment numbers is saying we want targeted redundancies in the areas of education in the areas of health in the areas of agriculture in back office administration and at the same time increase the numbers on the frontline services for young nurses you. and those graduate years who can do these things i'd also point out to you that government have already made decisions in the budget to impact on those with higher salaries not only in respect of those who have properties in excess of, of a million, uh, million euro value, but also in the capping, in the capping of pension relief for those in excess of uh, pensions of over 60,000, which will bring in 250 million, as you're well aware. So it's a case of not having increased income tax for anybody, but making those who earn more pay more. And that's, I think, equitable and fair and will be seen. As, as, for, the, as for those uh, former uh, former uh, politicians that you refer to, uh, I don't speak for them. Clearly, I commend all of those who did abide who did abide by the agreement. I listened to the to the uh, to the news this morning on on names that were given out on that. Clearly, this government have made decisions for the future about all politicians, about the ending of severance pay, about the reduction in, in, in wages, about the reductions in salaries, and therefore an impact on pensions. But you only want to pick what you think might make news for you. Well, that's not the way it's going to be. Thank you. Deputy Boyd Barrett. Oh, your Westminster salary is Boyd. Deputy Boyd Barrett. Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. Deputy Boyd Barrett, please, thank you. Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. Would you please, 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 please. Thank you, thank you. Take it easy, Einstein. Thank you, Doctor. When you're ready, please. Thank you. Deputy Boyd. Sorry, would you please allow Deputy Boyd Barrett, please? I'm not addressing you. I'm addressing all the... Deputy Boyd Barrett, Please go ahead, will you? Taoiseach. Ken Corner, thank you. Taoiseach. Taoiseach, uh, can I suggest that uh, the concern you expressed for the young men and women uh, of Ireland uh, in your uh, response there just a moment ago is belied by the very grim reality facing young people in this country as a result of the austerity policies and cuts and unemployment that are resulting from your policies? This grim reality was uh, revealed in the report just published by the Public Health Agency in Northern Ireland and the National Office for Suicide uh, Prevention, which reveals the appalling fact that 165 young people took their own lives uh, in, this, in the south of Ireland last year, and that the suicide rate among young people in Ireland is one of the highest in Europe, and that report linked this directly to recession and unemployment. And the, note, the, the report noted that the countries with the highest increases in suicide were Greece with a 17% increase and Ireland with a 13% uh, increase. Tisha, can I put it to you that these facts speak for themselves? 
The austerity policies being pursued by your government and the Troika are producing despair and hopelessness among many young people, leading directly uh, to this shocking increase in suicide. Isn't there a direct connection between young nurses being asked uh, to work for 20% less uh, than nurses who qualified a few years ago, young teachers being asked to work for 30% less than teachers who qualified uh, a few years ago, young junior doctors, a number of whom committed suicide last year, being asked to work uh, unsafe hours in our hospitals, cuts in guidance counsellors for young people uh, when early intervention and prevention uh, is so vital to protect our young people Thanks. from despair and hopelessness, and chronic unemployment and emigration which disproportionately affect our young people. I ask you simply, Taoiseach, do the young people, young workers, young graduates and young students deserve to pay the price for the crimes of others? and for a crisis that is not their fault. Do you not recognise, Taoiseach, if you treat you, young people as second-class citizens, they will feel like second-class citizens, and therein lies the road to despair. What are you going to do to give hope and uh, a prospect of a future to our young people so they don't feel this level of despair? Thank you. Taoiseach. There are some questions of this yesterday. When this uh, government was elected to office, in the three years prior to, prior to its uh, moving into government, 250,000 jobs were lost in the private sector in this country. 250,000. There are many of the people that you speak of. It is, it is the challenge of government to rectify the problems inherited here to rectify our public finances, to change the structures of the way we do business, to grow our economy and to create jobs. You cannot do that, Deputy Boyd Barrett, unless there is trust, unless there is an understanding that, uh, that this country will do as it says it's doing. And at long last, there are signs of confidence, of investor confidence, of investment confidence in the country, international reputation restored and moving in the right direction. Now, I sympathise, Deputy Boyd Barrett, I sympathise with every family in this country that's lost a life through suicide. I've been in many of their homes and many of their houses, and that unspeakable questions always remain. Should I have seen something? Was there a question I should have asked? Was there something I should have done? Now, you make the point in your normal charge here that this is a continuing austerity by government. Well, Minister Kathleen Lynch, who has a genuine interest in this area, has been given a budget which is ring-fenced dealing with the general area. But I point out to you, I point out to you, you might be quiet about a serious matter for once, Deputy McGrath. The, the budget for the National Office for Suicide Prevention has actually increased from 4.1 million to 8.1 million. Your colleague is talking about austerity and cuts in the area. Everybody understands the enormous amount of work that is going into to attempt to prevent this phenomenon from continuing at the rate that it's happened in the country here. And from, from, that, from that point of view, the report published today by Minister Lynch men, at the, by the Men's Health Forum in Ireland will indicate, uh, unfortunately, that the suicide rate uh, is one of the highest in Europe and that in Ireland, uh, for young males between 20 and 24, and for females uh, aged between 50 and 54. Uh, and the latest data uh, showed that 552 people committed suicide in Ireland in 2009, for which the latest uh, figures were available. So the, the allocation of the ring-fenced 35 million for 2012 was used primarily, I can call it, to strengthen the community mental health teams in adult and children's mental uh, health services. Some of those funds will be used to um, advance um, further suicide prevention measures and to initiate the provision of psychological and counselling services in primary care, especially for, ch for people with mental health problems. The announcement in the budget for 2013 of a further 35 million for the continued development of our mental health services is important. That means the recruitment of 470 additional staff to implement these measures. 
But it's not always about that, Deputy Boyd Barrett. The young generation get their information in a very different way than you or I did when we were growing up. And there are always different pressures on young minds. And this is a, a sad fact uh, that this is an issue about which there are now uh, a, a huge range of uh, organizations, groups, teams, agencies working. And that's where Minister Lynch wants to concentrate in having really effective uh, connection with, uh, with young people so that this issue, which is so tragic, uh, can, be, can be prevented. Um, I'm able to inform the House of Ciancola that the National Office of Suicide Prevention has actually implemented most of the recommendations in the strategy in a, in a four-way report or approach, delivering a general population approach to mental health promotion and suicide prevention, using targeted programs for people at high risk, delivering services to individuals who have engaged in deliberate self-harm, and providing support to families and communities that are bereaved by suicide. I agree with you in this, from this perspective, Deputy Boyd Barrett. There are 26 million unemployed in the European Union. 29% of young people in Ireland are unemployed. It's 3% in Germany and in Austria. So part of the presidency priorities for this government as presidency uh, of the Union will be to work specifically in the area of youth employment and op uh, opportunities uh, for young people to be employed. We all agree and understand that they are the future of this country and of the European Union. But the challenge for the government is to get those decisions made in the first instance which will allow for that indigenous confidence to come back where young people can see motivation and opportunity and give them a demonstration that hope is not just an aspiration, that it actually can come in by people and government working together here and with our European colleagues to provide those opportunities. Thank you. I just, I've just met so many people over the last number of months who are really driven by the opportunity that presents itself. And I do see, I do see signs of confidence returning Deputy Boyd Barrett and the news from our colleagues in Europe over the last number of days, as Minister Noonan pointed out, is significant, but not a game changer. We have to help create that game changer ourselves. Thank you. And well, you may, well, you may, well, you may sneer, well, you may laugh, well, may you be cynical, Deputy Thank Martin, you. when you left behind you, you left behind you a legacy that no other government in the history of this state had to, had to face, and which we are dealing with. Thank you. Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. You shouldn't have bothered talking out. He's the game changer. Why didn't we go there at all for us? Sorry, who's, uh, are you representing the technical group now, or is it Deputy Boyd Barrett? Taoiseach, Taoiseach, you're not really getting the uh, point of the question. The report, the report says that while death, uh, death rates from suicide decreased by 15% between 2000 and 2007, a reversal of this pattern coincided with the onset of recession in 2008. The countries with the highest suicide rate increases were those most affected by the recession, Greece and Ireland. Uh, you were written to by a junior doctor, as were we all, earlier this year, or at the beginning of, uh, at the end of last year, uh, a doctor who has since emigrated where he said the illegal working hours being performed by myself and my colleagues is leading to suicides, burnout, depression, alcohol misuse and road traffic accidents and deaths. The same sense of despair is being felt by young people who either can't find work Thank you. Or, or, or in the cases of young nurses and young teachers are being treated as second class citizens, being asked to work with the same responsibilities and the same long hours for 20 or 30 per cent less than people who qualified Thank a few years ago. My point is this, Taoiseach, isn't it the case that the policies of cuts and austerity that you are imposing are leading directly to the sense of despair and hopelessness Thank you. that is being felt among young people that are leading to this increase in suicide rates? Words about doing things about youth unemployment are no good Sorry, if the Deputy. policies being pursued are actually leading directly to youth unemployment uh, and despair among young people generally. Thank you. Tisha. 
Well, that's why there was no increase in income tax for anybody in the country, because we believe that a tax on jobs is an imposition on that sorry, sorry, You please. had your chance. You had your chance. You had your chance. I don't believe in having any, in any, any discrimination among the citizens in the country here. But you, you fail to understand. You fail to understand that when it was assumed that the veneer of invincibility of previous governments in the last number of years could keep, could keep paying at the rates that, that money was, was, was being doled out at, we now have to deal with the challenge we will never have our country rights unless we deal with our public finances, unless we deal with that deficit, and we can only deal with that ourselves, Deputy Boyd Barrett. You seem to think that you can continue to pay exceptional salaries on fantasy money. I believe, I believe that many of those young people, many of those young people would be more than willing to build on their graduate experience and work in Irish hospitals as Irish nurses on salaries that are equivalent to what starts off in the accountancy sector or the teaching sector. Yes, they're not as high as salaries in the past, but they are job opportunities uh, for the future. So in the, just for your information, in 2012, the 12 million that was allocated for suicide prevention, 7.1 million went to the National Office for Suicide Prevention. The remaining 5 million was uh, used regionally to fund resource officers for suicide prevention, self-harm liaison nurses in hospital emergency departments, and a number of local suicide prevention issues. And a further million is being provided to the National Office from the additional monies allocated for this year, uh, bringing that total to 8.1 million and a special program of measures to have further advanced suicide prevention in 2013 is currently being developed by Minister Lynch. In 2012, 14, uh, uh, 414 posts were approved, 135 posts were filled, 208 have been accepted, subject to process clearances, guard the vetting and so on, and the remainder are at various stages of selection, and the same will apply for this year. I admit that the appointment of personnel and the money is not all the answer to the problem. Uh, but what, what is the answer to giving hope and inspiration to young people? Is government working effectively with our colleagues in Europe, demonstrating that the economics of our country are coming right and that the job opportunities, which you should have listened to the national media in the last three days, where even they were surprised at the positive news of investment and job creation. In the country. And that's where the hope lies. That's where the hope lies for the future. But you don't want to believe that because you have a vested interest in seeing the country not thrive and not prosper. So we're moving away, we're moving away from, your, from your position of wanting demonstrations every day. We want to give hope and inspiration and a demonstration that things do work for young people. And I'm glad to see that that's moving in the right direction. You. Someday you might realise it. That completes the leader's questions for today. Let's we now move on to the order of business. The order of business should be as follows. Number 12A, motion regarding membership of committee. Number 3, Euro Area Loan Facility Amendment Bill 2013. Second and remaining stages resumed. Number 28, Residential Tenancies Amendment. Number 2, Bill 2012. Second stage resumed. Number 29, Electoral Amendment, Dáil Constituencies Bill 2012. Second stage resumed. It is proposed, notwithstanding anything standing orders at 1. Number 12A shall be decided without debate. Number two, the resumed second stage of number three shall, if not previously concluded, be brought to a conclusion at 7.30 p.m. tonight. Private members' business shall be number 48, which is the Education Welfare Amendment number two, Bill 2012, second stage resumed, to conclude at 9 p.m. tonight, if not previously concluded. Thank you. Uh, there are two proposals to be put to the House. Number one is the proposal for dealing with item number 12A, motion re-membership of committee without debate agreed to. Is that agreed? Yeah, that, that, that's, that doesn't represent the porridge of anybody, does it? Oh, okay. like, like last week. Is no. that agreed? Agreed. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, number two is the proposal for dealing. But I just get clarification. This is a proposal to remove Joan Collins from the committee of oversight and petitions and to replace her with uh, Deputy Michael w Wallace. Um, on the last occasion, there was a, a proposal like this before the House. 
the technical group actually opposed it, set a new precedent in opposing it. So Thank you, it. If that were to occur now, and the, and the government were to oppose it, nobody would be opposed to the Thank com you. committees from the opposition. Uh, number two, is the proposal for dealing with item number three, second stage of the Euro Area Loan Facility Amendment Bill 2013 agreed to? Is that agreed? Thank you. On the order of business, Deputy Michal Martin. Would you quieten down there for a moment, please? Don't be getting so excited. That would be our help. Uh, Taoiseach, um, Taoiseach, there are you, you, reports. You, you've taken up a senior position in the Troika. Now, you have to behave differently. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> On my left. Taoiseach, oh, could I. Um, in today's Irish Times, there's reports that there are seven vacancies on the board of the Food Safety Wait, Authority of Ireland for the past year. Uh, Minister Riley, for some reason, has not filled the vacancies, despite 25 people applying for those particular vacancies. Last week, we had a very serious debate in this House about a very serious issue about horse DNA, horse meat in beef burgers um, and so forth, a grave issue with profound implications for the reputation of one of our major industries. And we learned today now, what le that what the Food Safety Minister? Authority which is responsible for protecting the public, cannot even meet since last November because of the absence Sorry, of the quorum, because of the incompetence of the minister in his failure to appoint the members to the board. Yeah. Now, sources are saying, Taoiseach, no, that no, there's don't. a legislative proposal to subsume the Food Safety Authority back into the parent department. And I know the Minister Howland, as part of his policy, has outlined that that's the desired route. Now, I would seek uh, uh, your uh, confirmation or your... Uh, response to uh, Taoiseach uh, in terms of the Food Safety Authority of Ireland no, Act no, no. So and the proposed amendments of that Act. We where does that have, now Where does that now We can't have debates, a second leader's No, so I'm talking about the Food Safety Authority of Ireland Act. Uh, um, what about it? The, the promised amendments to that Act is there, to subsume the FSI. Is there promised legislation, <laughs> say, please, Taoiseach? I can confirm for, for, I can confirm we're losing for Deputy, direction here. I can confirm for Deputy Martin Kankora that the process of filling the places on the, on the board uh, is uh, practically completed by the Minister. I'd also make the point here, Deputy Martin, that it has no impact whatsoever on the working, the day-to-day -day working of the FSAI, which conducts its business. But the board, the board doesn't have an impact on the day-to-day -day working of Thank the you. FSAI, and the process of completing the appointments is is practically complete. Now, Deputy uh, Mary Lou Macdonald, no impact. Thank you. No impact. Please, there's only one chair here for the moment. Deputy Macdonald, thank you. He shook the, um, the McAleese uh, report into the Magdalen Laundries was supposed to have been published in the middle of last year. Um, there's been much foot dragging uh, since then. Your colleague Alan Chatter two weeks ago indicated that from that time uh, that this report would be made public within a, a time frame of four weeks. I'm raising this with you. I know it was raised yesterday by Deputy uh, Killeary. Um, because I'm very alarmed to hear that the government has not, as of yet, had sight of the report. So I want to, you to confirm uh, to Dadal when you will receive the report, when the report will be uh, published, and most crucially, that when the, the report is made public, that the government will move very, very speedily to the apology and the redress which Thank is you. due to, to the women. Nisha. Well, uh, as you're aware, Deputy MacDonald, the government asked Senator McAleese uh, to deal with this report. I can confirm to you that he has, uh, he has engaged exhaustively with, uh, with groups and the organisations and the women directly. Um, as I understand this, the, um, the, what's involved here now is just tidying up the completion of the report for presentation to the government. I, 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 I understand uh, that it was uh, Senator McAleese's intention that it might be completed by Christmas, but no more than any other uh, report uh, obviously, the, you know, the final drafting of it uh, can, can take some time. So I, do, I, I expect, Deputy MacDonald, that the report will be presented to government probably inside the next week to ten days. There won't be any delay in government considering it, and the opportunity for debate will be, uh, will be uh, held here in the House. Uh, clearly, government haven't seen the report yet, because uh, Senator McAleese has not yet concluded 
the final drafting of the report. That's all that's involved. I, I, just to say to you that an enormous amount of work and sifting through thousands of pieces of paper and records was involved in this. Thank you. And it's not just, uh, it's, it's too facile to say uh, this is foot dragging. Uh, the senator and his, uh, and his small staff have done, done enormous work in completing the report and it's just a matter of tidying it up. So it'll be very shortly. Thank you. Deputy Michael McGrath. Um, Tisha, can I ask if it is the government's intention uh, through the forthcoming finance bill to, to amend the recently adopted local property tax legislation uh, as many of your own backbenchers are quite exercised and seem to believe that there will be amendments in, in that bill which will change the property tax? We don't deal with amendments on the order of business. Is there new legislation? Or? No, no amendments. Deputy <coughs> O'Dea. Okay. Um, Tisha, you spoke a few minutes ago about the importance of hope and confidence in reigniting employment creation. Do you realise that the lack of credit is destroying oh, any hope for any hope? Hope. Now, can I, Just in relation to, in know, relation Deputy, to a please, specific I look for your cooperation. On page yeah. 6. No, no, we're not six. dealing with page 6 or on 7. Six of we're dealing with for promise government, legislation. Of, of the programme for government, we're dealing with that surely. Oh, oh yeah. On page 6 of the programme for government, there's a specific commitment to create, and I quote, a strategic investment bank. Thank you. To provide credit. Now, when can we see the legislation uh, for, for this bank? Thank you, Deputy. Didn't realise you were going to get there. That's credit right. is an important. It, credit is is fundamental. Actually, uh, everybody's agreed on this for the uh, expansion of the economy and for job opportunities and growth. Uh, it, as a first step here, government are, are completing the legislation in respect of New Era, which will provide the investment fund. Uh, bearing in mind that that can lead to a strategic investment bank. That will be this session uh, and clearly the strategic investment fund will leverage up monies for investment into, uh, into sound um, uh, infrastructure projects. But we agree, credit is clearly important. That's why the NPRF made 800 million available two weeks ago in three sectors for small and medium enterprises. That's why the Minister put in 10 points in an action plan for small and medium enterprises. That's why banks are now required uh, to prove uh, their lending and their credit availability for small and medium enterprises. And the uh, first part of your question will be completed when the strategic investment fund is created, leading, if the government so wish, to complete its view for a strategic investment bank later in the year. Deputy Durkin. We've changed some, as you know. Deputy Durkin. We've changed some, as you know. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Ken Porla. I was, I was distracted, Ken Porla. There's an awful lot of people I, I, distracted I, I, from the I, chamber this morning I for think some we reason. I don't know what it is. I think we should congratulate uh, Deputy Shane no need Ross, for congratulations. Uh, for his newfound environment there. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I, I, on a serious matter, uh, Ken Porla, yesterday, along with a number of other people, I raised the question of the bail bill. Uh, and, uh, Did you criminal... get an answer yesterday? No. Well, uh, this is a different context, yes. uh, Ken Corla. Well, the Criminal Justice Victims' state. Rights Bill and the Criminal Law Sexual Offences Bill. Oh. And in view of the, of the concern expressed by the Taoiseach uh, yesterday on this very serious issue, could I ask the Taoiseach again if it might be possible to bring forward one of the bills in question as a matter of urgency in order to deal with the very, very serious and compelling issue that has arisen in the past few days. Thank you. When are these bills due? Well, the Sexual Offences Bill is due for this year, Deputy Durkin. Uh, the, um, the Criminal um, criminal Victims' Rights, I don't have a date for publication on that, but uh, I would say this, that um, I've committed yesterday uh, arising from the questions about the horrific case in the papers that we should have um, a, um, a discussion here in the, in the chamber about deputies' views on sort of uh, the future working of the uh, court system, um, and that will, that will take place. But the Minister for Justice has set up um, a group looking at penal reform, which includes sentencing, uh, and that committee is actually doing its work at the moment. It might be appropriate that we would have um, possibly an interim report from them as part of the discussions that might, that might um, uh, you know, indicate what, what people's views here are. It's an interest, Deputy Durkin, of everybody uh, that we have a system that, that works effectively. Um, and uh, I, I note that um, there's been a request in, in the media, at least, that I should meet with um, Mrs. Doyle, the, the courageous victim uh, involved <coughs> here. I have uh, been quite willing to, uh, to meet Mrs. Doyle uh, and to hear her view as a victim of unspeakable 
horror uh, as to a perspective on how, how a victim would see the court system working. I can't, of course, comment upon the, upon the judge in question or upon the sentence issued. But I'm very happy to meet um, with Mrs. Doyle uh, at, a, at a convenient time. Deputy Kelleher. Uh, uh, Peter, if you might be able to help me because I have difficulty squaring the circle. That fictional document called Program for Government states that this primary care will be free and available to everybody by the end of the life of this government. Yet in the factual document of the HSE service plan, you're proposing to withdraw 40,000 medical cards. Uh, hold on a second, Deputy. This is promised legislation. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Yes, but we will, but we will no, need... No, we're not, but put but we will a parliamentary need question. But we, will, we will need legislation. We will need legislation in terms of medical cards. Withdraw medical... Oh. Because of the fact mm -hmm. that there's also a commitment that long-term illness patients would receive medical cards. And I'm just having difficulty. If you add it up, there will no. be more people who will lose medical cards well, this year. Like we won't go into the day. I'll just ask it because right. the whole pile of deputies waiting to speak. So we've only a limited number of minutes. So we can't. I mean, if you want to know is there promised legislation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And they're being withdrawn. I'm sorry, we're, we're not having a debate on that issue. Is there promised legislation in this area? Yeah, you sorry, you no, Deputy, would you please listen to Would you please respect the Chair? Thank you. I've tried to raise this in a number of cases. No, but we, this is not the uh, uh, question. No, look at all the same. This is about promised delays. No, no. Deputy, I must ask you to resume your seat. cannot get a medical card. Deputy, are you, are you looking to be thrown out or something? Thank you. There are 1.8 million medical cards issued in the country at the moment, more so than ever before. Um, persons, We're dealing persons with who lose the medical cards, the vast majority of those who lose medical cards will have a doctor-only card. Minister White's working in this area. It is the intention of, uh, of, of government, uh, obviously, over the period of government, to introduce universal health insurance. Like, sorry, would you mind, Steve? Would you please allow a reply to a question which is out of order anyway? And I prefer if it was no reply. Minister White is uh, proceeding with the legislation in respect of, uh, in respect of uh, primary care. Thank you. Deputy Kirk. If I might ask the Antishuk in the Irish News, which circulates north of the border and the border counties yesterday, uh, it carried a story in relation to the bridge over Narrow Water. And the story was casting some doubt on whether this uh, uh, symbolic project really in the border counties uh, would go ahead because of the issue of finance and north of the border. I'm wondering if the issue has had any contact at all with oh, members no. of the executive in relation to the project. Sorry, you'll have to deal with that uh, some other way. You have a request in for a topical issue and I'll be dealing with that matter. Yeah. Uh, so, so perhaps leave maybe it at, leave it at that might, in the context of the ministerial um, discussions, yeah, we well, raised yeah, the matter. The minister, the can maybe take well, note. Uh, but I can confirm that was raised at the, uh, uh, at the north-south ministerial, Deputy uh, Kirk. Um, there is interreg funding here, some funding from the Minister for Transport's office, uh, but uh, I raised it with the... Thank you. With the uh, with the executive directly at the um, at the last North South Ministerial Council, we will follow up on that. Deputy Healy Ray. Thank you very much, uh, Kian Caller. Could I just um, there is real fear amongst not only our elderly people but all house owners, in particularly living in rural locations, who are subjected to roving criminal gangs preying on them, who rob and terrorise yeah, them. Grand. With regard to the Criminal Justice uh, Provisions Bill, will the government change their policy of abandoning the rural Ireland? Provisions Bill, please. That's later this year, Thank you. Uh, the, the government have no intention of abandoning people in yeah. rural Ireland. You're closing all the gap stations. Uh, thank you. I, 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 thought, I thought when you were talking about roving criminals that you were going to mention about roving drunks or something like that, but... I want to raise, and I'm disappointed that Minister Hogan, there's no sign him around, under the Water Service Amendment Bill. No, he's, uh, not a, he's not on the order of business. That's fine. That's no, I know that. I know that. I'm asking. So I'm asking. So you want to ask him? You'll ask the teacher. But he makes about a, I'm asking the teacher. Of course I am. And, and I respect I, I ask the teacher about uh, grant aid that Minister Hogan announces, like the snow off the ditch, I say, it's gone so fast, for the uh, ho ho homeowners with septic tanks. 
When is it going to be beefed up? When are we going to see what it is? People have been asked to cost the rider, cost the manure. The Water Service Amendment Bill, that people are going to be levied and have to register. If they're going to register, they need to know and have clarity. It's in the Shannon. Yeah, well, you're aware. That's in the Shannon today, Deputy. It's in the Shannon today, Deputy. And uh, a Troika member like yourself would know that that's in the Shannon today. Thank you. Um, Deputy uh, McLennan. Taoiseach, we've already discussed the matter of death by suicide, but can you confirm whether the new director for the National Office for Suicide Prevention has taken up his position yet? The post was vacant from September 2011 to November 2012. Maybe you'll put down a parliamentary question about that. Uh, so Lynch to correspond with you directly on that, Deputy. Deputy Nulty. Uh, Taoiseach, item three on the A-list is the Child Care Amendment Bill to amend section 17 of the 1991 Child Care Act. Can I ask you when that bill will be published, but also if you'll honour your commitment while in opposition to amend section 45 of the Act to provide for a statutory right to aftercare for young people leaving you. state care, but your party explicitly supports you very much. while in opposition. Thank you. That's currently being drafted, Deputy, and I expect at this session. Thank you. Deputy Bannon. Thanks, uh, thank Carla. Um, the abolition of the Senate uh, bill is on the legislative programme for 2013, and, and I mean there have been a lot of yeah, reform proposals brought, this one yesterday, brought yeah. forward. And maybe can the Tisha uh, tell me if, if this announcement is a measure of his confidence uh, uh, that the referendum will indicate a need for such legislation? Uh, or wh when, is no, no, wait, no, when no. is it planned to hold the, the referendum? When is it planned? Oh, the session will be published in the next session of Cancola, and it's expected that the, the referendum will be held in the autumn. Thank you. Deputy Grealish. Uh, before the Christmas, I asked a question of the Tarnished as to when uh, funding will be made available for critical infrastructure projects that will, for much needed job creation. And he said funding would be made available for, take for instance, the in 17 and 18 in, in the Connacht. But I put a PQ down to your colleague beside you there, Minister Varadkar, who said Where that, we going, uh, I'm just fine finishing on this point now, who said that no funding will be made available until uh, state assets has been sold. So can, can you clarify to the House, will money be made available for critical oh, no. infrastructure projects for much needed job creation? Oh, that's uh, a feature. different issue altogether. We can't discuss that in the order of business. But I suggest you put down a topical issue and I certainly yeah. consider it. Uh, as you know, of the stimulus package, and I, I assume you're talking there about Gort uh, Deputy Grealish, which is of, of interest to you, which you've raised on many occasions. There are a number of major road projects here. Uh, this is subject to the, to the stimulus package moving through PPPs, uh, uh, availability of money and uh, consideration of the sale of state assets. But I expect, uh, I expect that um, the first of those is Newlands Cross, the second is Gartum, the third one down the south. I um, expect those to, to make serious headway and hopefully they can commence this year, hopefully. Deputy Butler. Mr. Tishuk, when is proposed legislation promised on the Criminal Justice Bill, Proceeds of Crime Bill, to strengthen the powers of CAB in relation to the forfeiting of the proceeds of crime? We've, we've brought in a lot of rules and regulations on diesel laundering, but it's one of the issues here that I really th do think that CAB needs more powers in this area. Thank you. Yeah, I can confirm for Deputy Butler that there are consultations going on with CAB about this. I don't have a date for publication. I want to conclude those. Um, those uh, discussions that are taking place with them. We can report progress later to you. Thank you. Uh, that completes the order of business. I now call on the uh, Minister of State of the Department of the Taoiseach to move a motion in relation to the membership of the committee. I move. The motion agreed to? Agreed. Um, we now move on to the Euro loan. Uh, Euro Area Loan Facility Amendment Bill 2013. Deputy Richard Boyd Barrett. Uh, thanks, Ken Corner. Uh, Taoiseach, the um, uh, People Before Profit and the United Left Alliance uh, will not be supporting uh, this brief.